Hi guys, welcome back to Will the Beard Reviews. Today we're going to talk about Batman issue 85, the conclusion to City of Bane, but not just that, the conclusion to Tom King's run on the Batman title. Now, some of you are going to be sad about that, a lot of you are going to be happy about that. I find myself somewhere in the middle. I was overall satisfied with his run end to end. I was even satisfied with this very issue. However, I am very much also looking forward to James Tinian's run coming up starting in the next issue. But we're going to talk about that in a month or so when that issue comes out. Today we're talking about 85 and I think this issue, like I said, is a pretty satisfying conclusion. A pretty good capstone, all-encompassing capstone to this epic run that Tom King has put together. 85 issues, man. It's not every day someone gets to write 85 issues for a title like Batman, an absolute A-list headliner title, but he did it. It's here. We are going to talk about the finale. Um, before we do, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you would like to. All right, let's dive into it here. So we kick it off. First off, we just pick up right, and this book does jump around a little bit. It's a very non-linear storytelling, which, some, which can be hit or miss, and this one, I think it, it worked um, pretty well. So first page is picking up where we last left off Thomas just punched Bruce and then he's laying on the floor telling him to stay down and then I love this Catwoman basically asks for permission and then Batman says all right cat break him and then she unfurls her whip ready to go to work great stuff and then we flash to um, a scene in a bar here where we've got Bruce Wayne and who we will find out in a minute is Chuck Brown and none other than kite man hell yeah sitting in the bar having a drink listening to the Gotham Knights game on the TV and now I really like the allegory that or the metaphor or the like the meta narrative whatever the hell you want to call it that plays out between these two guys along with the football game over the course of the book and we'll talk about it as we get to those pages but I really like it and I think it's a larger justification for what Tom King decided to do with this run and why I really appreciate it and why other people may not necessarily um, appreciate it as much as I do or some others do but like I said we'll talk about that as we get there so they're just chilling in the bar we got the sports announcer um you know, coming over here in the narration. Basically, the situation is the Gotham Knights are uh, down by five. They're on um, their own one-yard line. If you don't know sports, that's all the way at the other end, so they need to go all the way the length of the field and uh, score a touchdown. There's only one minute, 37 seconds left. Um, and so Bruce Wayne asks, uh, Batman asks Kite Man if he thinks they're going to win. And Kite Man says, uh, I liked Rios. We had a shot before he got hurt. But Campbell, no, talking about pre presumably the replacement quarterback. Bruce says, I don't know, isn't there always hope, right? And so the Kite Man fires back. Come on, you watch this guy. Hope is what kills you. We're better off just knowing we're going down, right? And so then there's another play. You hear the announcer and the, the quarterback misses the throw, right? And so... Kite Man's like, you see? You see, it doesn't work like that, right? And so then uh, Bruce Wayne introduces himself, and Kite Man's like, yeah, I, I, I know who you are. I live in Gotham. I know who Bruce Wayne is, right? He's like, oh, uh, like don't, he's like, I don't know why you're here. Don't you own the stadium or something? I don't know why you're here in this bar. And Bruce is like, ah, just driving by, listening to the game on the radio. thought I'd uh, pop in to see how it ended on a, a big screen. Um, and he says, well, here's to the nights, here's to the pain, here's to the misery. Where would we be without it, right? And then this an another uh, play gets announced. Uh, Cable throws across the middle. He's got a man open. Castro with an astounding catch. He had to go back and get that one first down at the 13. All right. <laughs> and there's my sports announcer voice for you, right? And so uh, and then we get, we flash back to this scene. Love this Wonder, or Wonder Woman. God, that's the, that's the wrong issue. Catwoman gets her uh, uh, whip around Thomas Wayne's neck and snaps him right in the back and then slams his face into the ground. I love it. And he says, oh, you can't. And Catwoman's, oh, honey, I just did. I dig it. I really, really dig it. Um, then we've got 
uh, Batman and Gotham Girl climbing just a random radio tower here, and she's asking, uh, you finally going to marry that girl or what? And he says, this isn't about me. We're supposed to talk about you. What do you want to do? And she says, um, I want to see you marry that girl, don't we all, right? And then Batman says, um, Bane used you right from the start. Now he's gone. Now your life's own. You've suffered because of me, and I need to repair that pain. How can I help you? And she says, you gave me training. You saved me. I'm fine. You should help yourself. He says, I don't need help. And they kind of um, keep going on uh, like this. And uh, Batman says, everything, everyone thinks they know me. No one does. And she fires back. She knows you. He, he's like, yeah, she knows me. And then he's like, why aren't you marrying her now? I, I love it. And so um, this is uh, a cool scene here where we go back here where um, Catwoman reveals that she has an I from the ventriloquist dummy and she says here um, good job Thomas leaving me alone with the pirate and the ventriloquist the most powerful weapon controlled by the only person he can't control because no one controls Wesker or Wesker no one but Scarface and so I love it the uh, the speech bubble for the the for Scarface is actually coming out of the eye and it, but of course it's really um, uh, Wesker saying it from across the room doing his ventriloquist act ask um act if i could talk tonight right and so um yeah i love that she has a piece of it and you know used arnold wesker to defeat psycho pirate which is just so very interesting right and um, then we go to what i'm presuming is uh, arkham over here where thomas wayne has uh, a mask on presumably me because he you know got his face broken from getting slammed into the ground um, and then uh, Batman says, I've been thinking lately about you and me, how, may, how you may be the only one who understands what I'm doing. I still talk to them. Uh, I try to, when I find myself, I ask them questions talking about his parents. He says, um, I ask him, I don't ask them questions. I ask the same question over and over. Are they proud of me? And then I listen. And he starts talking about loss, right? And he says, people who haven't lost don't know. But what we have, we know what it is to listen and to wait, to spend the rest of our days trying to fill that silence. Love it. And then we go uh, do another scene back in the parlor here. Um, Thomas says, you win. I'm done. My good boy, I pushed through. I pushed so hard. You would not fall. Uh, I should have known you were Wayne and Wayne's. We rise. And he pulls a gun out of nowhere and, and gets it on Batman. We got uh, a sad, somber scene here with Bruce and Selina at um, Alfred's grave. And he says here, um, I made tea in this afternoon with cucumber sandwiches. Of course, the boys came over. We ate. They're doing well. They send their love. They miss you. We all miss you. And then the signal appears um, in, in the night sky. And so they, they run off. Um, and then we get, you know, cool action scene here with Batman and Catwoman uh, running across rooftops. And then it's, they say here, remember the beach? Um, good stuff. And then they say, or Catwoman says, when should we, or should we get married? And Batman just says, when? They say, or she says, what is it, about 4 a.m.? Judge Wolfman's probably coming out of the bar soon. How about now? And he says, all right. And so we get just some... Uh, textless pages with this beautiful Mikhail Hannon art um, over here um, and they say just you know they say they love each other and kiss great stuff I love it one of my favorite comic book couples if not my favorite uh, comic book couple and so we go back uh, to the parlor here. Thomas says, you're a fool. Uh, I gave you what I never had, a chance with her. I showed you the uselessness of the mask. You lived in, I lived in pain so you could have happiness. I showed you. You are not Batman. No, you did not, Thomas. No, you did not. And we get um, seen here with uh, the bat and the cat in bed. Mikhail Hannon knows how to draw him some beautiful people. Um... And so they basically realized they forgot, they got uh, maybe a little entangled with each other and forgot to go to the judge. But hey, that's okay. They can go tomorrow morning. But then they basically say, you know what? We don't need a judge. He puts the, she's got the ring on her finger. And in their minds, they're married, which is maybe, I could have, I could, I could have handled having them. I would have liked to have had them have make it official, but, you know, if they're married in their eyes or, you know, whatever, then it's perfectly fine with me. As long as they end up together, she says, the bat and the cat 
we are forever and we get this amazing two page spread here i love it kind of taking us through the eras of it right uh old costumes like here's the year one um i think it's behind my hand here some some jim balland era stuff um lot so good the proposal on the beach oh Kel Hannon's art is so so good and then I love this right here you can in this picture right here you can see the cat and then a bat flying off in the background oh it's so good and then this right here I love it uh, Batman says uh, back in the parlor after the alley the pearls I was a child I thought that was the end I went to kill myself with a knife instead I took a vow I killed myself with a vow I was on my knees um, and this basically said you made his vow to his parents I lived by that vow the, I was the vow I was Batman I'm no longer that child. Life is not a trap you make when you're 10 and you're hurting. Life is a choice you make every day, every damn day. I choose her. I choose happiness. I choose family. And I choose Batman. Oh, I love it so much. You know, that, um, that's probably part of the, the bigger meta narrative that I want to talk about once we get through the whole book, right? Um we get uh, a scene here with Thomas and Martha back in the Flashpoint universe. Martha or Thomas talking about make, Bruce making him read that stupid book again with the, the pit and the animals. Um, and then that follows up with Thomas in uh, Arkham with Bane coming in to see him. I don't know if I can get this on camera, but you can see Bane's mask in the barely open door there. Really cool stuff. And then Bane asks, is that all? Thomas says, yes, Bane, I'm done. And then Bane goes snappy, snappy, and picks up Thomas and snaps him in half. Oh, good stuff. Thomas um, basically has resigned himself to what uh, Batman wants and says, when you're going to listen, finally listen to your father. Never. He's never going to listen to you, Thomas. Um and then we get some more Gotham Girl and Batman stuff here. He gives her the Platinum Kryptonite so she can get her powers again, um, which she does, and then flies off in uh, the next panel here. Um, back in the parlor, Bruce just lays a big old smack on, uh, or big old punch on Thomas and says, uh, what I need you to know, what I need you to understand um, is that you are not my father. Love it. And then we go back to the bar, and I think this is probably my favorite page here, right? So there's another play on uh, the football game um, where Campbell, the uh, you know the um, the the B string quarterback, actually um, has it. They're doing a hail mary, and Bruce says, "See, they've got a chance, right?" And then this is where I really love this meta narrative that plays in, and why I love Tom. K what I why. I'm gonna go. I'm, I like time. I love Tommy's King's Run. I'm gonna. I'm gonna commit to it. Says uh, Kite Man. Says whatever, dude. Whatever. This is just Campbell. This is what he does. He sets up and then he loses the ball. Ends up on his back over and over again. It's just like everything, man. It's always the same story. And then Bruce, stories change, people change, right? And then he says, um, uh, Kite Man says, "Good grief. That's something they just tell the kids. Face it, right?" We, what are we today will be tomorrow, same as we're yesterday. Nothing ends, nothing begins, it's all the same, it just keeps going, right? Bruce says, yeah, maybe, or maybe Campbell's taken enough hits. Maybe he knows how to go down and come back up. Maybe that's enough, maybe it's just enough. And then we get the the end where Catwoman uh, shows up and they sit down and have a drink together. And so what I think is part of that uh, meta narrative there is that I think... One of the big things that I think people didn't like about Tom King's run, and there's some of the way, some of his writing style that I can definitely see grades people the wrong way, but I think what he tried to do narratively with his story and the way he treated the Batman character was new and fresh, at least new and fresh in my eyes, and I think that in and of itself rubbed people the wrong way. And so what I think he is alluding to here in this writing, he says, um, um, Bat he, Batman here says stories change, and that's true. And then Kite Man, you know, very, you know, succinctly says nothing ends, nothing begins. It's all the same. It just keeps going, which is, you know, you could say that about comics. Um, what we're on 
issue 1017 of Detective Comics. You know, you can only have so much Sam before it gets boring, and when someone goes out of their way to take a big swing with a character like Batman and do something different and something new and take a new spin on the character, even if it ends up bad, which I don't think this did, not by a long shot, I still appreciate a big swing and a miss, and I think Tom King took a big swing and got a big piece of the ball. He may not have hit a grand slam home run, but I think he got a solid ground rule double that cleared the bases and uh, may not have been the best it could have been, but it was still pretty damn good. So you know what, guys? Just like Batman chooses to be happy and chooses to uh, honor his vow and chooses to be Batman, I choose to like Tom King's Batman, if not choose to love Tom King's Batman. And that's my final word on everything that no, 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 won't be my final word on it i'll tell we'll, i'm sure we'll have to talk about it a lot more but i really enjoyed this issue i think all in all for its ups and its downs this is a net positive for tom king's run so guys what did you think about it let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments down below be nice though <laughs> uh, thank you guys so much for watching if this is your first time here at the channel please consider hitting that subscribe button for me it would mean a lot and until next time We'll see you at the comic shop.